Welcome back to the series about Common Works Registration. Today we talk about CWR registrations for library music. In this episode, we use screenshots made with DMP, free open source music catalog management software. The link is in the description. Just like so many other things in CWR, support for library music has a long legacy of bad decisions. Here is simple work metadata, now we click here, to add a library release. I'll just run quickly through the steps. And we end up with this. If you want detailed explanations, watch the series about DMP. Once we create a CWR registration for this work, we get this. Yes, the difference is only in the last line. ORN stands for origin, and lib stand for library, the other two pieces of highlighted information are library name and something called CD identifier. The latter is an important field for blanket sync licenses, although it is called differently by different stakeholders. Before we move on, you should know that there are eight other origin types, beside the lib, general, film, etc. And they use different fields. But for lib, library name and CD identifier are required. The other important information is that there can be only one origin record per work. This does not make sense at all, if you ask me. I'll get back to that in a moment. While this is theoretically enough data for a registration, in practice, you always want to include some data about recordings. Maybe more. Back in DMP, I added two recordings. In the first one the recording and version titles are empty, meaning that the work title is used, and in the second, I added a version title suffix. Please note that DMP now also supports upload of audio files. Well, we are using the version that will be officially released in January 2022. Anyway, when we create the CWR file, we have several additional records in CWR 2.1. We have one alternate title, ALT. This is because CWR 2.1 does not support titles in REC, recording rows, and I did add that additional version suffix bed. We have a performer, PER, as well, for the same reason. Then we have two recording rows. And then our old origin row. Originally in CWR 2.1, there was room for only a single recording row, and it was actually called first recording. The origin row was actually referring to the first recording, as much as to the work. At some point this limitation of a single recording was removed, but the single origin limitation remained. Let us just fast forward to CWR 3.1. Although we have more records in the section about the writer, here we actually only get two recording rows. We do not need performer or alternative title rows, as recording rows hold information about the performer as well as recording and version titles. Still, only one origin row. Well, this video was made before the official release of 3.1, so maybe, maybe this is wrong. I hope it is, but doubt it. Here is the CWR series from the beginning, as well as Music Publishing 101 series, with an episode covering origins from a different angle. And over here are our series about DMP, the software used in this episode, and its large commercial sibling that green thing. Share, subscribe, like and keep watching.